Hello! Welcome you on our video channel Pumps Audio. In this video, we are going to consider some recommendations for performing field measurements. I hope that these recommendations will allow you to collect more reliable data and escape errors during pump system assessment. I would like to start with very important rule. Do not harm. Like in medicine, before we begin pumping system assessment, it is necessary to keep in mind that first of all, every energy saving action should not harm the process where the pump is installed. Always remember about peak modes and about emergency modes. Pumping systems should provide necessary flow of fluid to every consumer, including distant. Remember about possible emergency situation. For example, when one pump breaks down and it should not influence the operation of the process. It can be situation where the pumping system will have to provide more users in the future and it is necessary to take into account also. The rule GIGO, what means garbage in, garbage out. This rule is applicable for measured parameters. The reliability of measured parameters is the key factor which defines the result of the energy saving actions. Further, we will consider some recommendations which can be very useful for performing pumping system assessment. It is very important to establish system boundaries correctly, because the system approach is the most powerful method of increasing the pumping system efficiency. When we concentrate not only on a pump or an electric motor, when we consider the whole system, including piping, valves, fittings, tanks, heat exchangers, boilers, power supply system, and other elements. The pumping system assessment considers the overall efficiency by comparing the power needed to fulfill system requirements to input power. To calculate overall efficiency, we need to measure hydraulic parameters and electric parameters. The more information we get about the pumping system, the more reliable analysis we can do and more effective energy saving measures we can perform. Setting a baseline means that the current situation should be recorded and used for the comparison of the variance of the upgraded system. What initial information is necessary to have before pumping system assessment? PID is highly recommended to have before assessment. Review PID and piping is a matrix. Walk the system down. Nice to have a PID when you do it. Talk with operators. Develop a simplified flow diagram. Is it possible to measure hydraulic and electric parameters at the site? Other pressure gauges, flow meters, power meter. If not, is it possible to install it or use portable instruments? More information we have about the pump, more reliable results we will get. The list of information about the pump are presented here. There are different sources where we can get it. Pump nameplate test report or catalog, manual, and other documentation which were supplied with the pump. This is an example of a pump name plate. Here we can find main information about the pump. Also, we can request information about the pump from the manufacturer. It is highly recommended to have pump course before starting measurements because it can be used for validation. You can immediately define that the values of the flow or head are far from the real values, or very close to real values. During the analysis, superimposing a system curve will show the impact of making changes to the pump. The operating efficiency after a change will be dependent on the system the pump is attached to. There are at least three types of pump curves you can get. Curves from the catalog, 
Test report from the factory. Test report after commissioning of the pump. Field test curve can say users about changes of curves and degradation of the pump. It's highly recommended to make a pump test after commissioning and fix the parameters of the pump, especially for pumps with power more than 130 kilowatts. For pumps with power more than 50 kilowatts, it's necessary to have at least a factory test curve. It will be valuable information for you in the future. Information about pumped liquid. The name of the pumped liquid. Temperature and the range of temperature. Viscosity and the range of viscosity. Density or specific gravity. Presence of solid, concentration and size of particles. Vapor pressure, chemical content. This is information about electric motor. Type, voltage, frequency, full load amps, rated horsepower, speed, efficiency, power factor, and service factor. Information about electric motor characteristics can be received from different sources also. From the nameplate, from the catalog, and can be received from the manufacturer. During measurements planning, it is necessary to know do the parameters of the system change in time? If no, then single measurement will be enough. If yes, measurement over time will be necessary. If we are talking about system with changing parameters, for example the water supply system, it is necessary to make measurements over time and define the maximum and minimum operating values most often duty point. The best solution when historical process control data is available. It can be stored in scatter system or in the paper journals. Additional system data. Study head in the system curve. Operating hours. Pump control methods. Because the pump operating point is the intersection of the pump curve and the system curve, during the pump system assessment we have to determine the real pump curve and the real system curve. Determination of the proportion of the static component in the system curve is very important for selection of the pump method control. Let me remind you some measurement guidelines. Pressure measurements should be taken with calibrated reliable gauges or sensors. Flow measurements should be taken with properly installed collaborated meters. If using portable flow meters, confirm measurements at alternative locations. Pressure drop across a component and component curve can be used for flow measurement also. Motor input power. Preferably, measure power directly with a power meter. Also, motor input power can be calculated by using measured voltage and current and estimating the power factor. I would like to finish this video presentation by the very important theme, the cross-validation. The main problem in pump system assessment is validation of measured parameters. This is the mandatory condition before developing of energy saving actions. The reliability of initial information defines the expected result. There is a list of some recommendations which can be used for validation of measured parameters or determination of parameters that cannot be measured. Make your pumping system efficient. If you need more information, please visit our website pumpsaudit.com.